There's people who put some tears in their eyes that the makeup department has and they, you know, um, really push the idea by saying that so many big names and stars in the acting world are doing that. And so that's a justification for doing, of course, for doing it. Uh, some people hurt themselves. Um, some people look at a lamp without closing their eyes. Um, some people are thinking about something sad. Some people are using substitution. I mean, the list is endless of tricks that actors, professional actors, I don't know if they're professional or not, but actors anyway, are using to make themselves able to be able to deliver their sadness repeatedly because of the many takes that it takes to sometimes film something. And so I get that part that there is some nerves around the fact that you're going to have to reproduce something. I, I get that there is pressure. And at the same time, I want to say, well, that really is the nature of our business, right? Um, it's a little bit like um, if you're, I don't know, there was Wimbledon final this weekend and they played, I think, for five hours and a half. Did any one of them complain? Did you, do you think they went back home and went like, oh yeah, but five hours and a half, that's too long, that's too much pressure. They had to go up to 13 points in the last game. I mean, it comes with the job that you're going to have to repeat the emotion. You're going to have to repeat your freedom. You're going to have to repeat your anger. You're going to have to repeat your joy. It's kind of the basics, right? And I don't want to be condescending, but it's just because I want to, I want to raise the bar on the discussion here. Um, I think the first thing I want to address is why do some actors think that they need a trick, right? Because... Um, if we think of sadness and crying as one of the basic emotions and you're an actor and you're enjoying acting because of the bliss of being free, of expressing yourself, of living a moment, of, um, of really experiencing someone else's story, of defending a character's point of view, the bliss of acting and the reason, the passion that we all have for acting is really about how truthful it is and how amazing it feels when you can fully immerse yourself in another person's world and life and you can be in that moment and live it for real. And so the reason that anyone would look for a trick to cry on cue is really because the basics are not covered. Like the foundation of your acting approach has not been covered. If your instrument is incapable of feeling sadness in public repeatedly, your foundation, I don't wanna say sex, but it's, it sounds jud judgmental, so I'm not gonna say that. Your foundation has no foundation. There is no foundation. You can't even think about crying on cue if your instrument is all tied up. And we happen to live in a culture where we're raised to not feel our emotions. The first second you were born, you were told to not cry. You were told to shush. And having that instrument tied up by all the obligations and the conditioning and the wiring and the way we were raised to be a good person, to do things right, to please, to be accepted, has tied up your instrument. So the first thing you need to do when you're an actor is to really undo that wiring so that you can have access to your full instrument again to your full, full instrument. That's the first thing, your foundation, so that you can feel what you feel. So that the feeling doesn't go, oh, feeling and oh, no, wiring says that's not a good feeling. We can't feel that. Feeling that is not okay. So you, you, need, to, you need to undo the wiring and the conditioning that prevents you from feeling. So I, I just want this session 
to kind of be a little bit of a mindset moment where you guys realize that it's not about that. It really isn't. The second you need a trick for anything, it means you're manipulating, it means you're faking, it means you're aiming for the result, and you're not really present and delivering the best thing you have to offer. By the way, you're not allowing yourself to experience the immense satisfaction of being able to be sad for a character. You're not taking into account the fact that on the other side, whether it's casting or a director or an audience, they can't be touched if you put tears in your eyes or if you fake or if you think of something else. You can't fool them. You can trick yourself. And in the moment, make yourself believe, oh, okay, I'm off the hook, I did it, I cried on cue. But if those tears are not real and they don't pertain to the situation and they don't come from your instrument in that moment defending a character's life, they'll be worth nothing. They won't move anyone. You're not fooling anyone. It might give you an impression that you're manipulating people and that you're getting it done, but you're not getting anything done if you fake or trick crying or any emotion for that matter. But for some reason, it seems like actors are more attached to the crying on cue part, but it's true for all the other emotions, right? Faking a laugh, no one believes in that. Faking a cry, no one believes in that. Sometimes I see actors who fake the crying and there's no tears. And I'm like, do you think you're going to get away with this? It's not honest. It's not authentic. You're not feeling it. But that's your job. It really is your job. Acting is not the art of faking. Acting the, is the art of being alive. So if you don't have access to those emotions as a professional, or even as an amateur, if you have it in your ambition to act, you need to reestablish that connection. Absolutely. Like, it's like if I'm a gymnast and um, the leg split thing is a little too much for me, so I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to trick that part. The problem is if you trick the leg split, you can't really do the cartwheels around the bar. You can't do the cartwheels on the ground. You can't do them on the beam. You can't do anything if you don't do your leg splits perfectly. This is the same thing. If you don't have that foundation of an open instrument that can feel, I'm not, saying that, I'm not saying that acting is feeling, but you need to be able to feel. If you cannot feel, you need to take care of your foundation. And I don't mean that as a, something for beginners because a lot of people who do the, you know, the reset journey training of, uh, acting teachers themselves or singing teachers so it's not, or or people who are in their 50s. So it's not about beginning. It's about really taking care of the huge, ridiculous humanity, mountains of lifetimes of sadness, of anger and joy that you have inside of you that you want to be able to tap into with no problem, without the struggle, without needing to think of the result. That needs to be like in your pocket, under your belt, done, reliable. Then you can think about, okay, all right, why am I doing this character? What's, what, what's the purpose behind it for me? What am I fighting for here? And then those two things come together. When I started working on Instinct and I found my first access to Instinct, I was really excited. I was like, oh my God, I found a way to, to get to my Instinct. And every time I um, do it, I really feel that my instinct is there. And then I had this audition um, that could have been a huge break. It was for Luc Besson, and the, one of the main characters um, was pregnant. And so they needed to look for a replacement, right? And it was in Paris, and they needed an English-speaking actress. And I knew the casting director, Luc Besson's casting director. And um, she called me and, um, you know, said, okay, this is, uh, this is great. It's a great opportunity. And I went there. I was super excited and super nervous. And I had to cry during the scene. And though um, I wasn't a terrible actress, I guess I was a good actress. I wasn't great. Um, I was kind of 
feeling some kind of confidence because I could access my instinct and I had been working on that because I knew that's what the missing piece was for me. But I, but I, I don't know, I was there and um, she asked me to cry on one of the lines and we did one take and I didn't cry and kind of moved her little head on the side of the camera and she said, okay, let, let's do another one. You really need to cry here. And she kept telling me, you know, th listen, like I have a sword on top of my head, just do this and you have the role. I mean, literally, we need to have someone right now. You're here, I know you, I like you, let's make this happen. And we did another take and um, I was feeling my instrument shrink inside of me. I was feeling that it was like, <laughs> like cement inside of me. I didn't cry, I think we did a couple, if not several takes. And she was just like, can you not just press on the button like you're an actor, just do it. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So it was not even crying on cue. It was just crying, not 20 takes in a row, just crying. And when I got out of there, I really realized that I needed to go much, 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 much deeper with my instinct in order to get back to a place where everything is free flowing and abundant and limitless. And so I completely reset my instrument and that's when everything changed and I could, I was on set in, in, a, in, a, in a, that one I was booked in a lead role where I lost my son in a feature and there I had so many scenes where I had to cry on cue for so many takes and I remember a very seasoned actor told me, how do you do this? It's so difficult. And by then I had understood it's not difficult, it's essential. It's easy. Once your instrument is open, it's, it is like a button. It's easy. There's no trick needed. You can just be there with your emotions for your character. But the first step is really to reestablish that connection with your tied up instrument so that you can kind of break through the resistance and access what's, what's, the, what's there, which is limitless, which is always there. You want to go into an audition room or on set where you're so vibrantly alive that they want you back over and over, that they rewrite the scenes for you, that they make the, the, the role bigger, that they change the role description because they want to have you and you're blonde and they wanted a brunette, but they're just going to rewrite it for you. So there's so much more that's available than the little tricks that are manipulating that are not giving you the experience that you're in for as an actor and that are not providing the actual impact that you could have on your audience. So I really strongly invite you to, um, to change that mindset, really, to, to never ever go for something much smaller than yourselves. Um, Make sure that you can connect with your instrument. Make sure you undo all of that wiring so that you have access to your pure instrument. And this, then yes, train it like a pro. You need to be able to, to deliver when you're asked to deliver. That's the nature of this work. So make sure that whatever pure stuff you find in there, it's sharp, it's ready to go. You need to be an Olympian. Don't go for the tricks. No one will be fooled, especially not you. It's just like this experience when you're tricking your acting compared to the, the ginormous orgasm that you can have when you're actually present, free, 100% instinctive, extraordinary. There's this really just two ways, right? You're either going to fake this and no one's going to be fooled, or you, in, in, including you, or you're going to do this for real. And then, then it's just like enjoying being in the nectar of life over and over and over again. And I bet that's why you joined this profession.